shout hallelujah. You are the Lord, that is your name. You will never share your glory with any man. You will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God, that is your name. You are the Lord, that is your name. You will never share your glory with any man. You will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God, that is your name. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals, the great physician the resurrection and the life. The one who can kill and the one who can make a life. We come to you this evening even as we search your word on the subject of healing. We are trusting you, O God, that not only will you heal us and make us totally healthy, but you will clothe us with the unction of healing so that we can become vessels of healing to others. Amen. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Please sit down. I welcome you again to digging deep as we continue our discussion on the subject of healing. When we started, we talked about the fact that God who wants to heal us. He wants us to be healthy. That is his desire. That is his utmost wish for us. Then we looked at the roots of sickness and disease, which we said is principally as a result of sin. That is what brought sickness to this world. I have emphasized this over and over. I will repeat it again. When you see a believer sick, don't conclude that he is a sinner. <laughs> so, you don't start looking at every sick person that is a sinner. No, we say sickness came to the earth because of sin. And the devil takes advantage of that to afflict us with sickness. But we also say that when sickness comes to you, it is an opportunity for you to search your life to be sure that there is no sin anywhere. We also look at the roots of healing and we said it's principally in the finished work of Jesus on the cross. Healing is already done. This evening as I was meditating on this subject again, particularly on the question that people keep asking about, oh, is it that anytime someone is sick, it means he's a sinner. God reminded me of some things that we believers do that open us to attack. When you are not in the perfect will of God, you are opening yourself up to spiritual attacks. When you engage in battles that God did not send you to fight, you are looking for trouble. And God showed me the story of Josiah. Josiah was a very godly king. You will find his story in Second Chronicles chapter 35 and uh, verse 20 to about 25. Second Chronicles 35 verse 20 to 35 to 25. Josiah was one of the best kings in Israel. Now, the king of Egypt got up and wanted to go and fight the king of Assyria. And they were going to pass at the border of Israel on their way. Josiah got up and said, mobilize his soldiers and say, I want to go and fight the king of Egypt. The king of Egypt sent a message to him, please, 
I'm not coming to attack you. I am on my journey to go and do my war. Josiah did not consult God. He didn't ask God whether he should go and fight that battle or not. And he went to that battle and he didn't come back alive. What was surprising is that why didn't God defend him? God didn't send him. As a child of God, don't jump into things that God didn't send you. Even battles, two people are quarreling. They didn't invite you. You jump inside it, you are looking for trouble. When they start firing arrows, spiritual arrows, and you are putting your head inside what God didn't send you. So a lot of times when we mention sin as the reason for sickness, we are always thinking about all those big, big sins. If you are not in the will of God, you are not doing what God asks you to do. You are opening yourself up to attacks. Well, let's go for today. <laughs> That's enough for review. How does God heal? How God heals? Um, the outline is long, and I don't want to spend too much time because it's very clear how God heals. And I'm trusting God as even as we are studying today, healing will be taking place in the mighty name of Jesus. But much more, the reason why God led us to this study is to make all of you to become instruments of healing. That's more important than receiving healing yourself. So healing has already been procured on the cross. We settled that last week. That's why the, Jesus called it the children's bread. He said it is children's bread. Mark 7 verse 27. You remember the story of the Syrophoenician women who came to Jesus. I healed my daughter. Jesus said, no, 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 I didn't come for dogs. This, is, this food I have is only for children. It's children's bread. So healing is, is for us. So but how do we receive healing? Number one, healing is received in the name of Jesus Christ. God heals us through the name of Jesus Christ. In Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and 18, Mark 16, 17 and 18, it tells us clearly that it is in the name of Jesus. Say, in my name. In my name, they will cast out devils, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and in short, shall not, they shall take up serpents, they will drink deadly things, it shall not hurt them, and they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. It's not just the hands, it's because it is done in the name of Jesus Christ. Once it is in the name of Jesus Christ, there will be healing. Acts chapter 3 verse 6. Acts 3 verse 6. The disciples put it to practice. Peter looked at a man and said, Silver and gold I don't have. But what I have, I'm giving it to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the crippled man got up and began to walk. When they questioned Peter in Acts 3 verse 16, Acts 3 verse 16, they were questioning him, How did you do this thing? He said, Ah, it's not me. It's not me. It is, it is, and his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong. His name, through faith in his name. Don't ever attribute healing to a man of God. And if God begins to use you to heal, don't ever attribute it to yourself. There is nothing about me that can heal anybody. There's nothing about you that can heal anybody. But in the name of Jesus, sickness and diseases will go. That's why this evening, every one of you that is sick, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you shall be made whole in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Healing is in the name of Jesus Christ. Acts 4 verse 10. Acts 4 verse 10. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him, Doth this man stand here before you whole? It is by the name of Jesus. Healing is in, by the word of God. God heals by the word of God. In Psalm 107 verse 20, Psalm 107 verse 20, he said he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. His word, his word. You know the Bible says that God exalts his word above his own name. His word. His word. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 8 to 13. Matthew 8, 8 to 13. 
there was this centurion who came initially he said he wanted jesus to go and heal his child but as jesus was about to go he said no 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 no, don't come just send a word say i'm a man under authority when i tell my servants go they go come they come just speak and jesus said that's great faith go and the man went and it was done exactly like that in luke 17 verse 7 12 to 14 luke 17 12 to 14 there were these these lepers who cried to jesus have mercy on us and jesus just spoke to them and said go go and show yourself to the priest and as they were going they were all cleansed he just spoke even today you can just speak and healing will take place john chapter 4 verse 46 to 53 john 4 46 to 53 there were a man who who came to jesus and was begging jesus to go and heal his own son and jesus just spoke to the man and said go your way your son is okay go your way your son leave it and the man believed and left he said and the man believed the word that jesus had spoken unto him and went his way by the time he got home they told him that your child is okay he said when did he get okay and when they told him he discovered that it was at that same hour that jesus told him your child leave it that the child became well so when the word is spoken you receive it like that the man believed the word he received it he believed it and it was done so unto him don't always wait that healing must take place the way you want god can use any way to heal as long as you have faith there was this man in acts chapter 9 verse 34 acts 9 34 called Aeneas. The man was sick and Peter just looked at him. He said, Arise, make your bed. He said, Jesus Christ has made you whole. Arise, make your bed. He just spoke. And it was done. Just spoke to him. Acts chapter 9, verse 40. Acts 9, verse 40. Jesus, Peter was about to raise a woman from the dead. He was expecting to lay hands on her. He didn't lay hands on her. He prayed and turned to her and called her by name tabitha arise and she opened her eyes just spoke as if he's calling someone from sleep by the word of god one of these days god will give us liberty to study the power that is in the world we we elevate many things in the church far above the word of god and it's not correct many of us are more interested in a bottle of oil a mantle an anointed handkerchief to a laying of hands they are all fine but the word the word the word of god and if you speak it even you jesus said if you have faith you will say to this mountain you will just say to a mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and if you don't doubt it will be done you just speak if you find what is written ah stand on it and when a man of god speaks something into your life grab it stand on it you will see the result by touching or laying on of hands how god heals he heals by touching or laying of hands in matthew chapter 8 verse 9 thank you jesus one more time by the word of god i declare healing over your lives in the mighty name of jesus so by laying of hands a leper came to jesus and the leper was he looked at jesus and said i know you can heal me i don't know whether you are willing he said, if, if you are willing you can heal me so jesus said i will i'm willing to touch him. because he knows that lepers know that they are not people are not allowed to touch them so and he saw jesus touching people so he was he didn't know whether jesus would be willing to touch him so jesus touched him and the leprosy was gone so by touch we are used to this one we are used to this one because we see it done every time by laying out of hands so i won't go into all the various scriptures there are so many bible passages there showing where jesus touched people jesus touched people 
The disciples also followed in the same way. They laid hands on people and people were healed. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Number four, healing takes place by the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit is like electricity. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is like electricity. And uh, at least even your basic science, we know that there are different ways which electricity can be transmitted by radiation. Radiation is, you know, this light is there. It's just radiating. Just radiates light. That's why normally you are not supposed to build house under a high tension wire. Even though in Nigeria we, we, don't, we have ignored all those things. Where 33 kVA is passing, that thing is radiation. It's emitting things you know, so the power of God, if he's present, can just by radiation. That's why when you are in an atmosphere where the power of God is manifested, healings will just be taking place. The reason we run to a place, a redemption camp, is because power of God radiates. A lot of people are praying. A lot of people are praying, so there's, there's a charged I don't want to go into physics, but there's a lot of spiritual magnetism. <laughs> the magnet of the anointing of God is, the electric field is big, it's intense. So you see, sometimes people will say, as I just came down from the bus, I put my feet on the camp, my sickness disappeared. I'm praying that very soon, when we will step on this ground, they will be healed instantly. In the mighty name of Jesus. But you have to join me to pray. All of us praying together. All of us praying together. We'll be creating that, that presence, that power. So, where the power of God is, is at work, healings take place even without any human being touching anybody at all. You will see healing taking place. Um, the power of the Holy Spirit. There are Bible passages here, Luke chapter 5, verse 17. Luke 5, 17. The Bible says that Jesus was teaching. And while he was teaching, the Bible said the power of the Lord was present to heal. The power of the Lord was present. So when we gather together, Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them. And if God is there in the midst of them, the power is going to be flowing. Power is going to be radiating in that place. There are other Bible passages here. I want you to study them. Luke 6 verse 19. Luke 6 verse 19. Luke 8, verse 4 to 6. Luke 8, verse 4 to 6. Even when the woman with the issue of blood touched Jesus, Jesus said, who touched me? The Bible said Jesus perceived that power has gone out of him. You know, power can flow. Some of you who have carried anointing, you understand. As a man of God, when the power is on your life, you can feel it. That's why there's a level of anointing that, can, that can, cannot stay on a man for too long. Even you that is carrying the anointing, Sometimes it vibrates, vibrates in your hands. You can feel it vibrating. You know, so you can't remain under that kind of thing for too long. So God lets it flow at a point and he lifts it away. You know, when, you, when he needs to flow through you to do things, it flows through you. You can feel it. It vibrates. So, uh, the power of God. Sometimes, um, like last Sunday when I was preaching, by the time I got up to preach, I was feeling. So when you see a man of God shaking, shaking, sometimes because he himself is. <laughs> so sometimes to help yourself, you just crack a joke. You crack a joke and people laugh so you, you can relax and be calm. You know, because you need to, con the Bible says the, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. So that process of training yourself to manage anointing requires so, when I watched my father and the Lord able to sit still, I told myself that I want to be standing still like him. In my younger days, I'll be jumping, jumping, screaming. By the time you go home, you are tired. <laughs> but you see, when that is you, he can preach three times, four times in a day, carrying heavy anointing because he has learned how to manage. So when you realize that, you still have many, many meetings to do. You have to control yourself, even though the power is there.
Praise the Lord. I'm explaining that because some of you will soon start carrying that anointing. You have to learn how to manage it. <laughs> you have to learn how to manage it. Praise the Lord. By anointed clothes and aprons, handkerchiefs, healing takes place. And in the same way, you know, we talked about radiation. You can also transfer power to something. You can transfer power and put it in batteries. You know, so you can transfer that power, put it on clothes. You can transfer it. You look on the cloth, the power will be there. The power will be there and you can carry it and travel with it and lay it somewhere and it will still do the work. You know, in the time of Jesus, it happened with, with, with the classic story of the woman with the issue of blood. She said, I just want to touch the hem of his garment. I just, and she was not the only one. There were other people too who were clamoring. They just want to touch his clothes and they were healed. They just touched his clothes. In Acts chapter 19, 11 and 12, Acts 19, 11 and 12, the Bible says, And God wrote special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and diseases departed from them. Evil spirits went out. They took clothes, you know, handkerchiefs. People criticize some of these things. I can understand why they criticize it sometimes, but because there are extremes. Some people start selling anointed handkerchief, selling, and then there are some people that their faith in the handkerchief is even more than their faith in Jesus Christ. No. It's not the handkerchief that is healing. It's the name of Jesus. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. So don't get to that point where you now put more faith in a, a cloth. The same way people put more faith in a human being than in Jesus. In a way, it's not the fault of the man of God. When there is anointing upon your life, people will but the faith is supposed to be in Jesus, not in any of those things. But God uses those things. God uses those things. Anointed clothes, anointed handkerchiefs. And it's one of the reasons I said we should be transmitting the Holy Ghost service here. Because when you sit here, you are watching. Even from the redemption camp, if the Jew say, raise your handkerchief, if you raise it here, you will see the power will still get there. Because there is no distance in the realm of the spirit. If people can raise handkerchiefs in New York, in Australia, and get, why can it not take place here? Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. By anointing with oil. By anointing with oil. Mark 6 verse 13. Mark 6 13. And they cast out many devils and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. So it's not today that we started using oil. Some people criticize it, but it's in the Bible. And Jesus gave, I mean, the Bible gave express commands in James 5 verse 14. James 5 14, is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. It is done in the name of the Lord. And listen, this is a Bible study. Oil is oil. The, what we are used to is, um, is uh, olive oil. Maybe because it's easy to carry and because it's not really here. We don't use it for cooking here. But I want you to know that oil is oil. If you use granite oil, you it is oil. <laughs> if you use palm oil, it is oil. I want you to know that. So there is nothing special about olive oil. No, there's nothing special about oil from Jerusalem. I remember one day we had the privilege of going for pilgrimage, me and my wife, to Jerusalem. And people were buying bottles of olive oil from Jerusalem like anything. Ah, and I, I like, at a point, when we got to the airport, they had to remove some of them because their weight was overloaded. And I didn't buy any of them. They were surprised. And because, okay, a few people sent me to buy for them, so I bought for them. One pastor specifically requested for those tiny, tiny bottles. I said, fine. It, it, it's, more, it's not more anointed. It's not more anointed than if you take granite oil from your kitchen, pour it on somebody's head, lay hands and pray. It will work. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah, but don't be using granite oil because it may, some people may not like you pouring granite oil on their head. Also because that one is treated, is, is clean, is perfumed so uh, hey, that's why people are going for it i'm just explaining for the sake of explanation so that you attach some people even call goya anointing oil it's not anointing oil oil is oil 
It is the anointing of the Holy Spirit that makes it anointing oil. Then healing takes place in answer to prayer. Just answer to prayer. When you pray and ask for healing, it takes place. And the person does not need to be with you. Somebody can be in London and you are in Nigeria and you pray with him and God will heal him. The person does not even need to be with you or connected to you on phone by prayer. In Acts chapter 9, verse 40 to 42, Acts 9, 40 to 42, we have read this passage before where Peter raised Abita from the dead. But if you note there, the Bible says he kneeled down and prayed. He kneeled down and prayed. It was after the prayer that he got up and spoke to her and she, she opened her eyes. And even in James chapter chapter 5 where we read before if you read from verse 3 from verse 13 james 5 from verse 13 is any among you afflicted let him pray is any merry let him sing psalms is any sick among you let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him is the prayer first before anointing with oil in the name of the lord verse 15 say and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the lord shall raise him up and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven. Verse 16, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. Pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. If you will pray, God will heal the sick. I've told that the Jew has told his own story of how when his children were small and he got born again and started reading the scriptures. When they are sick, he will put a panado by the side and he will pray and watch and see whether they'll be healed. If they, he wait and say, okay, if they are not healed, I'll give them panado. And he will discover that they are healed. And when I, read, I listened to his story, I laughed. Because I remember when I got also filled with the Holy Spirit and started learning these things. I, I face the children in my house. If any of my elder brother's children are sick, and the mama is complaining, this child is sick, I will say, give, it, give the child to me. Now check the, take the child to my room. Hold the child to my chest and pray. I still remember one of the boys, he, he himself is he's a big boy now, he's married with children. It was a baby, the mother was complaining, this boy is sick, and we have given him Panadol. We have done this. Now. I said, give him, give it to me. Give him to me. When I heard him, he was very hot. So I took him to my room. And as I was praying for him, he slept off. So I laid the child on my bed. I came out. I told the mother he's sleeping. So I went. After about an hour, I remembered, ah, that boy. And the devil told me he's dead. So I ran to my room. I saw the boy. He was still sleeping. I put my hand on his chest. Ah, he's still sleeping. Then I remember the scripture where Jesus woke, raised somebody from the dead and took him to the mother and said, give him something to eat. So I took the boy, went to the mother, I said, take, give him something to eat. And after the boy ate, he started playing. So from that day, anytime the boy is sick, the mother will send him to me to go and pray for him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So start. Start from somewhere. Start. Don't wait until you become a pastor. Now, how does God heal? God can give you all kinds of divine instructions and if you follow those divine instructions you will see healing will take place you remember the story of naaman in second kings chapter 5 is 10 to 14 the prophet just told him go and dip in the river seven times just an instruction he hesitated but when he did it it worked jesus did a similar thing in mark chapter 3 verse 1 to 5 Mark 3, 1 to 5. Jesus found a man whose hand was withered. The hand is withered. And Jesus said, stretch it out. And as the man stretched his hand, the hand became healed. Just by obeying divine instructions. We have read these other passages in Luke chapter 17, verse 12 to 14. Luke 17, 12 to 14. Where Jesus told those lepers, go and show yourself to the priest. It's just an instruction. And they obeyed the instruction. And they were healed. 
there was another man. Jesus spat on the ground, molded this thing, put on his head, go and wash in the pool of Siloam. In this case, he gave a specific place. Go to that particular pool and wash there. The man went there, washed. And he was okay. There is this testimony that Daddy Joe has shared many times about a day at the national headquarters where people were gathered and he was supposed to pray for the sick. And God told him, today, don't lay hands on anybody. Just tell everybody to dance. So this woman was brought in. They carried her. When they got there, she was lying down in the car, came out and said, they brought her for prayer. And they told the deputy general of Asia, the late deputy general of Asia, that's the one that came to attend to them. That one said, ah, today, we are not praying for anybody. The instructions that everybody should dance. This woman is carried. She can't even get up. The man said, the instruction is that everybody should dance. So, they told her. So, the mama just started by just shaking whatever part of the body she can shake. After some time, she was able to get up. After some time, she was able to walk. After some time, she entered the church and joined them to dance. Healing had taken place. Just following divine instruction. Even you that is ministering to people, you need to open your ears because you are not the healer. You need to open your ears to know how does the healer wants to heal today. That is you told of another day where God told him to dance around the people that are sick. Just dance around them. So, ask them to come out. He danced around. Danced around. Danced after something. The Holy Spirit said, it's enough. And every one of them was healed. I've seen situations where daddy said, God told him to sit on a chair. He sat on a chair. He said, get up. Tell everybody who wants healing to go and sit on the same chair. Some people say it was idol worship. How does sitting on a chair bring healing? The man is doing what God said. That's how he wants to do it that day. So, if God gives you an instruction, just follow the instruction. Just follow the instruction. And healing will come. Now, there are just diverse ways which God heals. By sundry means, by different, different means. There's no straight jacketed way. This is not how you can't you can't you can't box God. You can't box the Holy Spirit. You can't box the anointing. Some of these places we have mentioned before, just just to review different different methods. In Mark chapter 7, verse 32 to 35. Mark 7, 32 to 35. This person was deaf and his speech was impeded, couldn't talk very well. And the Bible said Jesus put, took him aside from the multitude. Many times Jesus will heal people in the midst of the, but this time he took him aside. After he took him aside, he put his fingers into his ears. He spit on his hand and used that spit to touch the man's tongue. <laughs> and after that, he spoke to the man. Be opened. And the man was open. Look at. But you will discover that he didn't repeat this method with another person ever. That was what was done that day. In Mark chapter 8, verse 22 to 26, Mark 8, 22 to 26, Jesus took a blind man in a city called Bethesda, Bethsaida, took him, led him out of the town. Before, he just took the man away from the crowd. This one took the man out of the town. <laughs> a blind man came for healing, held him by the hand, let's go. Took him out of the town. And when he got out of the town, he spit on the man's eyes. Then he laid his hands on him, asked him if he can see. The man said, I can see, but I'm not seeing clearly. I'm seeing men walking as trees. Jesus laid hands a second time. I asked him. Now the man said, I'm seeing very well. Jesus now told him, don't go back into that town. What was the problem in that town? We don't know. <laughs> 
I'm just trying to show you that the methods of God are diverse. Diverse methods. So, if you see a man of God use a method that looks strange to you, don't be too quick to judge him. Don't be too quick to condemn him. If Jesus could do different, different things, I'm just imagining today, somebody come out for healing and you spit on the man. The thing would be on Facebook. It would be on Instagram. It would be on Twitter. Men of God spitting on people. <laughs> I'm just praying God will never ask me to do that kind of thing. Because they will insult you. But Jesus had to do that for someone to be healed. How about the shadow of Peter? Healing the sick. Shadow. Shadow. I wonder, you know, time I read that passage, I wonder, was Peter even conscious that his shadow was healing the sick? Maybe he was not even conscious. But people discovered that ah, I just stood. He passed by me and I got healed. He told somebody, told somebody. So we know where he's going to the temple, this is where he used to pass. So people will line up. Line up so that his shadow, man, God is great. I hope somebody will say hallelujah. What he did before he can do again. But if you read all these methods, you will discover one thing that is so common. Faith. 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 Acts chapter, Matthew chapter 8 verse 13. Matthew 8 13. Go thy way as thou hast believed. So be done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. That's the story of the centurion who said, just speak a word. As you have believed, as you have believed, it's about your faith. Matthew chapter 9, 27 to 30. Matthew 9, 27 to 30. This man that Jesus told, this was a blind man that came to Jesus. Jesus asked him a question. Believe ye that I am able to do this? A blind man came. Have mercy on me. He said, do you think I have power to do this? The man said, yes. Or the men, there were many. They said, yes. So he touched their eyes. He said, according to your faith, be it unto you. According to your faith, be it unto you. He said, there are times when healing takes place solely by the move of the power of God. And there are times when healing takes place solely by the faith of the people. And there are times when it is a combination of both. When healing is taking place solely by the power of God, the people's faith is not of much significance. Especially unbelievers. When God just wants to demonstrate his power. But for believers, he expects you to have faith. He expects you to, those who have known about God, he expects you to, to, to exercise your faith. Mark, Matthew 15, 28. Matthew 15, 28. Jesus said to this woman, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou will. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. That is that woman that Jesus said, No, 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 I don't give my bread to dogs. Look at that. And the woman said, ah, ah. but even the crumbs that fall on the table from the table, dogs do eat that. Great faith. If you can have faith. Even the man called Bartimaeus, Jesus said say to him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Mark 10, verse 52. Mark 10, 52. The man was screaming, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus said, what do you want? He said, I want to receive my sight. He said, go. Your faith has granted you your request. And he received his sight immediately. Your faith is very important. Acts 3 verse 16. Acts 3 verse 16. Peter said, and his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong. His name, through faith, 
in his name. Acts 14 verse 9 and 10. Acts 14 verse 9 and 10. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. Peter was preaching. There was a cripple in his front. The man was listening. And at a point, Peter perceived that this man had faith. So he spoke to him, stand up and walk. Peter first saw faith before he could issue the command. I didn't include this in this study, but I'm sure you are aware. Jesus went to Nazareth and the Bible said he could not perform miracles. We are going to discuss that next time we meet, most likely. He could not. How could Jesus not be able to? He could not perform miracles because of their own belief. What that tells us is that no matter how intense the anointing is, if there is no faith, it will be difficult for healings to take place. But where there is faith, healing takes place easily. The reason we are teaching these things step by step, step by step, is to build faith. Because the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What that simply means is that faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. I want us to rise up. Because it's about your faith. For me, I know I'm not sick. <laughs> but in moments like this, what I always say is, Lord, perfect your health. In my book, in the Bible, say in the, even medical science says prevention is better than cure. So even if you know you are not sick, just say, Lord, I receive health. I receive perfect health, never to be sick. And if you are sick, this is time to receive your healing. There are many ways here, but the summary of it is your faith. So talk to the Lord. You may know someone somewhere that is sick. You can send a word to that person there now. And that person will be here. Talk to the Lord. Oh. There's a healing in that name. Healing in that name. There's a healing in the name of the Lord. There's a healing in that name. Healing in that name. There's healing in the name of the Lord. Yes, Jesus. There's healing in your name. Healing in the name. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's healing in your name. There's healing in your name. There's healing in the name of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. In the name of Jesus, I receive wholeness. I receive fresh strength in every cell in my body, in every organ in my body, in every system in my body. Yes, Lord. From my head to my feet, spirit, soul, and body, I'm whole. I receive health, perfect health. Perfect health in the name of Jesus. Oh, when pestilence come, I shall not be sick. When diseases come, spreading, they don't touch me because of the health you have given to me. I am made whole. I am made whole in the name of Jesus. I am made strong in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. My strength is renewed like the eagle. In the name of Jesus. My head is perfected. In the name of Jesus. Perfect health. Is what I received this morning. In the name of Jesus. Can you lay your hands on yourself? When the Bible says you shall lay hands on the sick. It includes you. <laughs> lay your hands on yourself and say I receive healing. I minister healing to myself. I minister health to this body. 
I minister healing to this body. I minister perfect health to this body. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes. I am made whole. I am made whole. In the name of Jesus. I lay my hand upon this body. And I speak life into you in the name of Jesus. I speak health to you in the name of Jesus. I speak strength to you in the name of Jesus. Yes. Oh, yes. Batakara Bashanta. Seko Prada Kashanta. Seko Prada Kashanta. Posente Krada Bokushanta. Ziga da Prada Bosheke. Makrada Boseke. Bakuska Prada. Thank you, Jesus. I receive it, O oh God. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Maybe to also help one another. Can you hold the hand of someone beside you? He said, we shall pray for one another and we shall be healed. Just hold somebody's hand and say, Father, heal my brother. Heal my sister totally in the name of Jesus. Heal my brother. Heal my sister. Jesus. Yes. You say to pray for one another. The effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous avail it much. Our righteousness is in Christ Jesus. So we ask for everyone here this evening to receive total healing and total health. Perfection of health in the name of Jesus. Perfection of health. Perfection of health. Perfection of health. In the name of Jesus. Makasonto. Stisento Bredeshete. By the radiation of the power of God over this congregation. Baladabo Sutu Brigish Kese. Skevreba Predebo Suprigista. Stuvi Bibri Stopre. Pashtisovri Bredebo Sapradaba. Ah, deteriorating organs. Malfunctional systems receive health in the name of Jesus. Sida Brabo Bobo 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 I speak life to every cell in your body in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak healing to every organ in your body in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak perfect health to every system in your body in the mighty name of Jesus. If there is anything in your body that is aging and not working to full capacity, I restore it to full capacity in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Thank you. It's Bible study, so let's have questions. Let's have contributions. Questions and contributions.